What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield, well I guess not Sword and Shield, but like Gen 9 discussion video. So, uh, first of all, I have to say apologies if I sound a little bit tired, I am, I just got back from work, I started my career recently, like, you know, big boy job, um, and I am now very tired, so I have to also work on a new recording and streaming schedule, which I should finish up tonight, uh, but yeah, today... Even though I'm tired, I want to talk about some Pokemon that in Gen 9, I would like to see get some buffs. Uh, now, these Pokemon might not even be in Gen 9, but I'm focusing mainly on Gen 8 Pokemon, with one exception in a Gen 1 Pokemon. You can see the whole list on screen right now, uh, but yeah, I mean, you, we'll, we'll get into it in a second. But if you guys enjoy this name point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily VGC content, even though it's really hard right now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, also answer my comment question of the day, which Pokemon do you want to see get buffs? in Gen 9, because it seems like ever since Gen 7, we've been getting buffs for old Pokemon, just not the buffs that they need. But yeah, let's get into it. So, let's start off with my number one most favorite, this Pokemon sucks but I want it to be good pick, Beedrill. So Beedrill has Generation 1 Syndrome, what does that mean? Let's take a look at this, ready? So uh, if we go to National Dex, and we go to, uh, I guess, any Gen 1 Pokemon, let's take a look at, for one, Beedrill, obviously, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, I'm trying to think of another example. Vileplume has middling stats. It doesn't seem to do anything great. Uh, Magmar obviously got like fixed via evolution. Like a lot of Pokemon got like the attention they needed from Gen 1 to fix their like Dudu Kaka stats. Um, but it seems that Beedrill has been neglected, and especially like, you know, in, in Gen in Gen 6, or I guess it might have happened in um, Aorus, uh, we got Mega Beedrill, which actually like really, really boosted Beedrill's viability. Uh, but now that Megas are gone, I think that we need to like have a permanent solution that isn't tied to a gimmick. Uh, but yeah, so Beedrill has 65 HP, 90 attack, 40 defense, 45 special attack, 80 special defense and 75 speed. Its highest stat is its attack and its second highest is special defense. Everything else is like below the average for Pokemon. If we look at even one of the worst like generation eight Pokemon, let's take a look at uh, Orbeetle. Orbeetle has like, it has stats above 100. It has two stats above 100 and its other like second highest stats are 90 and 80, which isn't bad. That's like a normal stat distribution nowadays. If you take a look at like, you know, the other Pokemon I'm talking about today, we have an attack stat over 100 and then we have like some pretty decently high uh, bulk in the physical side and an okay speed stat. Beedrill only has like just mediocre stats. It does nothing amazing. Uh, it, it has a stat ratio where it's like high speed and attack compared to the rest of its stats that make you think it's, it wants to be a sweeper, but the speed isn't high enough to outspeed things, and the attack isn't high enough to one-shot things even at plus two. There are a couple of ways that we can deal with it. Personally, I think Beedrill should just get its mega stat distribution, uh, but keep its like special defense and lower the speed. I think it should keep 145 speed. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be worthy guy. I, I I think it should keep 145 speed. I think that's an amazing speed tier two give Beedrill to make it good. But that attack stat, we can honestly just make it like 110, 110, and it'll it'll automatically be like more viable than it is now by a huge amount. Uh, if you want to give it adaptability, that's fine. But personally, I think Swarm and Sniper are fine, especially if you're going to be running like Sniper with 145 speed. Like then you can actually go for like a crit strategy. So I think that would actually help it quite a bit. Because then at that point, you're outspeeding things like Tapu Koko, you're outspeeding things like uh, Spectrier, you're outspeeding Dragapult. That's huge. If if a bee could outspeed a dragon, that'd be like the comeback story of the century. It'd be like the, the tortoise and the hare, but instead of a tortoise and a hare, we have a jetliner and the main character from uh, that one Jerry Seinfeld movie, the B movie, Barry B. Benson. That would be insane if Barry B. Benson could outrun like a, a, a like a jetliner or whatever it is, a, a stealth bomber. But yeah, I think that if we're going to fix Beedrill, you could literally ignore the attack set if you gave it like 150 or 145 speed. I honestly think it might only need speed, like even though it might become a not like a worse um, Ninjask, because Ninjask has like similar stats to what I'm describing, 90 attack, 160 speed. The difference would be in the typing in that this thing could Swords Dance and become like a fairy killer, especially since it does have slightly superior like special bulk. So yeah, that's my thoughts for Beedrill. I mean, it really just needs speed, but if you could raise the attack stat to 100, 110, all of a sudden it's usable. Dreadnought. Now, Dreadnought, this, this you know, I'm, I'm done with my Generation 1 rant. Let's get on to the uh, the Gen 8 Pokemon that 
just kind of did not slap this generation. Apologies to Graplocked. I love you. I used you for a really, really good Calyrex Ice team. Uh, but in going forward without, you know, Calyrex Ice, uh, you're not going to be able to carry. But yeah, Dreadnaw. Right now, uh, Dreadnought is underwhelming because, for one, it has a pretty bad typing for a rain team in the fact that rain teams already hate dealing with grass types, uh, and rain teams have Pokemon like Ludicolo, so if you're in like a swift swim situation, Dreadnought, while it does outspeed Ludicolo because Ludicolo has, what, like 70 speed? Yeah, it does outspeed Ludicolo, it's not one-shotting it because its attack stat is only 115, which is pretty high, you know, that's fine, but it's, it's not as high as it needs to be. Um, but Ludicolo will be able to like one shot it back, get rid of a Focus Ash if you're running that um, by, you know, fake outing it. But also Kabutops is like comparable to it. It's like, let's be real, 60 HP, 105 defense, 90 HP, 90 defense. You're getting like one shot and two shot by the same moves. You're both not taking a Giga Drain. You're both not taking a Thunderbolt. Neither of you have Sturdy and you both want to run Swift Swim. You're going to pick Kabutops every time because it's more... It's more min-maxed, right? That bulk isn't really helping Dreadnought any, any, anything, you know? Uh, Kabutops will literally do the same thing as Dreadnought, but be faster. And they run pretty much the same moveset. Like, you would see, like, Liquidation, Rock Slide, Swords Dance, maybe, and Protect. If you really want to run, like, Swords Dance, but you might, run, you might run a coverage move. This guy, you run, you know, Rock Slide, Liquidation, Swords Dance, Protect. They, they practically do the same thing, but Kabutops is faster. I think that if we're going to buff Dreadnought, we need to do something about its move pool to set it apart from Kabutops. Yes, Kabutops, you know, Kabutops has like a much wider move pool than Dreadnought, but I think it might benefit Dreadnought if it got something to specialize it compared to Kabutops. It does have head smash, but it needs something that will make you want to run it on a rain team. I'm not quite sure what that is, but like it has to have something that actually makes it valuable to a rain team. Perhaps maybe get rid of the rock typing, maybe just make it like a pure water typing. That would actually make it like a really decent Pokemon. Even if it does lose stab on rock slide, it's now going to be able to take grass moves so much better. Like it probably won't drop to a seed bomb immediately. Um, eh, maybe it does want to keep the rock typing. I don't know. Right now I'm just throwing out ideas for Dreadnought because I really don't know how to make it different from Kabutops enough, other than like a complete stat re redistribution. Uh, but even then, we could also just give it a different other ability. I think Shell Armor is like a decent ability for Togekiss metagames, where you see Crit Kiss running around. But alternatively, instead of Shell Armor, you could give it like Rough Skin. And then all of a sudden you can run like a, a Rocky Helmet Rough Skin Dreadnought and bolster those defenses and try to use it outside of Swift Swim, uh, outside of like Swift Swim Rain Dance stuff or Rain Teams. So that would help out Dreadnought quite a bit. I think just you need to make it different from, from Kabutops. They're, they're practically clones of each other. Next up's Orbital, and I already know what Orbital needs. Orbital is a lot like Beedrill. However, Orbital doesn't want to go on the offensive. Orbital has phenomenal stats, in my opinion, except for its speed. Yes, 60 HP does bring down the bulk in value you get from having 110 defense and 120 special defense, but Orbital always wants to be a supportive Pokemon. It wants to run Struggle Bug. It wants to run Hypnosis. Don't don't at me. It wants to run Hypnosis. Trust me. Uh, it wants to run Helping Hand if it can, and like the rest of the moves or whatever you need. You could even run like Dual Screens Orbital. It has it has access to that. For one, it's losing its G Max. So now it doesn't have access to any kind of gravity because it actually doesn't learn that if you didn't know. That was surprising to me. Um, also, Frisk is a phenomenal ability. I'm so glad they gave it that. It's really useful in best of one. Uh, but one, we need to give it gravity. And two, if this thing had a speed stat of 100, the value it could bring to a team is so much more. Even if it, like, you could even make it 101 if you want to get crazy because now it outspeeds stuff like Charizard. But yeah, uh, giving it a speed stat of 100 allows it to outspeed... Um, pretty much like 99% of the restricted Pokemon in the game. Not 99, but like before Gen 5, like every restricted except for Mewtwo um, that, you know, you see in VGC. So I'm talking about like Kyogre, uh, Rayquaza, uh, Groudon, Dialga, Palkia, like those big ones. Like you're outspeeding those now. So your Struggle Bug also gets more value. Uh, you're outspeeding Lander Therian, so you're no longer worried about Rock Slide flinches. Uh, but also just then you don't have to invest nearly as much in speed. Because when I did make an Orbital team, when I did end up, you know, jumping the uh, <laughs> jumping the shark on my channel and saying, hey, I'm going to use an Orbital, I had to run a Tibid Nature with like a lot of speed to 
basically just speed tower with like modest Kyogre. And that wasn't great. So yeah, like if you can take EVs out of speed to do pretty much the same thing or even, you know, outspeed what you could previously, it, it just gives it so much more value to its support moves um, and to its bulk even because then you can invest much more in the bulk. Uh, it, it isn't something that wants to go on the offensive. It basically just wants to sit in the field and be helpful. So gravity and probably like a 10 speed boost addition would be so good for it. Kaparaja, I think, is actually a sleeper pick for Gen 9 if it gets in. Because sheer force with Iron Head and Play Rough and like all these like sheer force boosted moves can be very annoying to deal with. However, I personally think that it is a little bit too easy to one shot. That 122 HP does help out the low 69 defenses. Nice. Um, so if we could increase that 69 defense by 10 points each to 79, you practically have 80. So it's like 122 HP with 80 defenses in both. All of a sudden, Kaparaja becomes actually a pretty difficult Pokemon to one shot. You can calc to live almost anything. I think at that point, you have to run like a guts boosted Conkeldur uh, to consistently one shot it, which, you know, you have your counter. And, you know, it's a it's a very specific thing that you can use to beat it. Uh, but also, like, it just makes it more, a more well-rounded Pokemon. I, I do think it's going to get better with Dynamax going away. Obviously, you know, 30 speed allows you to speed time with Amoongus. Uh, but speed time with Amoongus also just isn't good enough to make Kaparaja viable. If we really, really want to break Kaparaja, or if we don't want to increase those defenses, what you could do is take away, like, 5 speed. Give it base 25 speed. Make it slower than Amoongus, make it a better Trick Room Pokemon, and then you can take like that five speed and throw it in the defenses and now it has like 74 defense. That would be a better stat distribution than what we have right now. If I could use a Kaparaja with 25 speed and 74 defense, I would. It's better than the Kaparaja we have now. Uh, in VGC, you have to be like really careful for these sleeping, uh, for these spore spammers, obviously, you know, and Amoongus is the most obnoxious one you're going to run into. And if you're speed time with Amoongus, that means that if you want to consistently underspeed it, you know, to guarantee that you can actually move under Trick Room, where Kaparaja needs to be to be, to be viable for being real, uh, then you have to dedicate an item to like, not like a lagging tail, um, what is it? To like Iron Ball, which you don't want to run because you want to run a Life Orb. You want to run a Choice Band, something that like will increase its damage output and make it more valuable to a team. So yeah, freeing up that item slot, making it consistently slower than Moongus would actually be very, very good for it. But if you want to just, you know, not make it slower than Amoongus, defense boosts. That'd be amazing. However, th I think that we're more likely to get a speed drop and a defense increase by like the same, you know, stat. Like, you know, five removed from speed, five increased in the defense, because that technically would be the least amount of effort required to completely rework a Pokemon. Uh, finally, the last thing on my on my list is going to be Grap Locked. Uh, I'll be real with you guys. Grap Locked doesn't have an ability. It doesn't. Yeah, Limber lets you ignore, like, you know, Thunder Wave, Glare, I guess, Effect Spore. For some reason, you close combated, like, a Parasect or something. Uh, but it doesn't have an ability. It just straight up doesn't. You're, you're almost never going to get Thunder Waved on a Grap Locked. Uh, Technician boosts, like, no moves on this thing. What moves get boosted by Technician? Actually, let me organize it that way. You have Technician Bind, which, congratulations. Your base 15 power move just went up to, what is that, 23 or 22? Faint, you know, that's that's a halfway decent move. Congrats, it's 45 base power. Whirlpool, that awesome, for some reason, 70 base special attack. You know, now, now you have a, a decently powerful Whirlpool. Uh, yeah, no, those moves suck. Your best move is Brutal Swing or Circle Throw, which you don't want to really run. I mean, you could run Brutal Swing if you really want to, but like Circle Throw isn't something you want to run. On Graplocked. Graplocked wants to be this Pokemon. It wants to protect. It wants to uh, Octolock because that move is actually broken if you use it the right way. Uh, it wants to Drain Punch to have recovery. And its last move, you know, you can run Topsy Turvy. That's what I ended up running. Or you could run like Coaching or some other just, you know, generally useful move. Even Bulk Up if you want to get crazy, you know. Uh, but Graplock not having access to an ability just makes it bad. It, it, it needs something ever so slightly to make it more viable at its one job of being a fighting type because the only way you're going to get away with using grapple is if your team needs a fighting type and you specifically need a fighting type that can i don't know octolock or coach 
It, it's a very specific role that rarely comes up, and that's the reason I had to use it with Calyrex Ice when I did, because I was like, hey, I need something uh, that deters Incineroar because I'm using a, a Calyrex Ice. Uh, and also, it'd be really nice if I could reverse Intimidates or just use funny uh, topsy-turvy, you know? That was the thing that I was doing, and it fit in that specific role. However, in future VGC formats, we might not have Calyrex, and Graplocked has to be able to function on its own. My solution is Graplock can actually be a fairly decent fighting type if it does better at beating Incineroar, which would mean it needs a different ability. Like, we could have it have Intimidate, and then it would just be an all-around decent fighting type, it, but it would be almost a worst hit on top, to be honest. Uh, but if we want to make it, you know, unique, I would argue that this thing would get a lot more value out of one of those abilities that blocks Intimidate. These include Oblivious, which would also make you immune to Taunt, Inner Focus, or Scrappy, which I think Scrappy is... I think it's a decent one. It lets you now, like, Octolock Ghost types and um, Drain Punch Ghost types, which is very, very nice. And also, it sort of fits within the theme of Graplock. He's always, like, trying to fight you when he's... You know, in the wild, chasing your bike uh, on the on the on the lake, which is weird because in Gen Eight you can ride your bike on a lake for some reason. They made that a thing, but yeah, I, I think that that would make sense. However, I think Inner Focus is probably the best one because that actually makes it so much better of a Pokemon on lead and so much more of like an explicit Incineroar counter because you can literally just close combat Incineroar and it goes down. You ignore the Intimidate, you can't be flinched, and not being able to get flinched by Fake Out also means that you're a better Octolock Pokemon. You can Octolock something turn one on the turn it tries to fake out you, you don't flinch, and it's stuck there now. And then the next turn, after it's lowered its defenses, the Drain Punch lets you recover some HP. So yeah, uh, these were just some ideas I thought I'd throw out. Obviously, you know, I probably wasn't the most articulate with describing why these buffs need to happen and my thoughts behind it, because like I said, I'm very tired today, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to figure out a schedule to record, but yeah. Uh, Beedrill, more speed, slightly more attack, Dreadnought make it not a worse Kabutops or Beetle. It literally just needs gravity and like 10 and 10 points in speed. Kaparaja, make it slower. Make it slower and it, it'll do something. And Graplocked, give it an ability because it straight up doesn't have one. Yeah. That's a summary. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.